We are going to nerd out on iOS. Then I'm going to take you for a climb in a spooky mansion. <gasps> Before I show you a simple and beautiful way to manage your budget. You know what? It's time for iOS Today. Today. <laughs> iOS Today comes to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure they are by making access and authentication seamless. Whether they're working in the office or remote, visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This, this is Twit. twit. This episode of iOS Today is brought to you by Manscaped. Manscaped promotes clean hygiene when it comes to shaving your you-know-what. Don't emerge from quarantine looking like a Sasquatch. Get 20% off plus free shipping at manscaped.com slash twit. Hello, Micah Sargent. I'm Leo Laporte. Everybody, welcome. Welcome to iOS Today. Micah is the boss of this show. Did you know that? <laughs> I'm the boss. He's the boss uh, of this show. I say, hey, you know what we're doing this week? We're talking about nerdy stuff you can do on <laughs> iOS. Actually, this is appropriate because we want to dedicate this show to a, a wonderful nerd uh, oh. That we all adored, uh, Grant Imahara, who passed away suddenly of a brain aneurysm at the age of 49 uh, this a couple of days ago. And he was, of course, the Mythbuster. I did not know this, but he also rebuilt all the R2-D2s for the prequels and was one of three controllers of the R2-D2s in the prequels. Really? Yeah, he was an amazing, a talented engineer and an admitted nerd. <laughs> I'll never forget the day he came by our brick house uh, studio and everybody, of course, because it's grand is, is like, oh, Grant Amahara is here, Grant Amahara is here. And he's so unassuming and sweet and kind. We did a triangulation uh, with him. I as interviewed him for triangulation and he was just fantastic. So that's uh, awesome. Yeah. I'm wonderful. I gotta guy. Look that episode up. I didn't yeah. know. Yeah. And he really will be missed. Uh, you know, he was just a, a great nerd. So today, tabletop gaming, Grant, if you're watching, this is for you, buddy. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I think let's – I'd like to hear – you You shared in the chat some really interesting um, tabletop games. And mine more focuses on tracking. You got and, like 20-sided die and things like yeah, that. Yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, whereas you have some options for actually playing, it seems, tabletop games on your iOS devices, which I is exciting. I love um, – th there is a whole category of new games, uh, many of them from Germany, um, wh where they're, it, they're taking the old, you know, Milton Bradley <laughs> – uh, Hasbro gaming and bringing it into the new nerdy century. These are strategic games, often um, games that take some attention and planning. They're intended for tabletop. They're intended for usually uh, three to six players. And they're so much fun, but they're also hard because there's always a lot of manipulation there's cards and pieces and die and all sorts of things to handle setting up the game is often complicated and my big gripe is i can never get anybody to play them <laughs> with me you have to be with a group of nerds now once we come out of quarantine i'm going to find a group of nerds in fact here in petaluma they just opened a, a tabletop gaming uh and and wine bar uh, oh that's right yeah yeah, yeah they did now, I was looking forward to checking that out before all of this happened. I have a feeling, I hope they're still there when this is all over. But I thought that was a great idea. You can get little snacks and you can go in and you don't have to have somebody to play with. Uh, you can go over to the Carcassonne table or the Settlers of Catan table and jo and say, let's, let's get a game going. So I'm going to show you, I think, three of the best games for tabletop gaming the games that i've owned for some time but can never get anybody to play with me <laughs> uh and i would say you know in every case these are three pretty good uh interpretations of the game this is this is carcassonne and actually let me let me do this via the um 
uh, Apple TV because I think you want to hear. This is this is a really quite a visceral experience. So I'm going to uh, put this up on the Apple TV here. Well, while, while we uh, play this game. Um, let's go to input six. There you go. Carcassonne. And we're going to go back to the main menu. This is kind of the prototype for a lot of these games. The idea is you're building a medieval town and you're competing with others to control the roads and the cities. Uh, so already. this, yeah, complicated already. And it's actually a fairly simple a game to play. Notice we can do two things. We can do a local game, which if you're like me and can never get anybody to play with you, <laughs> uh, you can play. And then, but there is an online version, which is nice. So if now I have to say, and we we talked about this uh, earlier, um, this these games really are better with real people in the real in the real world. Um, so you can actually add players, and you have some choices on the AI players or the 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 you know the non the computer generated players you can play ai focused ai builder ai aggressive ai conqueror these are different styles of play so let me let me have a conqueror in there as well so now we're going to play with four players and we can choose which is really nice you'll have to pay extra to unlock some of these expansion packs one of the nice things about all these tabletop games is as they became popular they would add additional features so once you kind of mastered one version of it you could add features but I haven't unlocked any of those. Those are in-app purchases. Um, do you want to play with fields? Yeah. Dead tiles? Yeah. Remaining tiles less? Yeah. I don't, you know. This is for more advanced players. You don't have to worry about this. And let's just play a game. I'm just going to show you briefly the strategy. So in the real world, you would be placing these cards uh, to build a town or a series of towns to build an area. The nice thing about Carcassonne when you're playing with a computer is you actually get to it'll actually tell you what the next card is it's down here in the lower right and it'll show you where you can place it because carcassonne the way it's set up can only be placed in a you know cards can only be placed where they continue a road they don't uh, block something now i have a choice i can play i can claim one of three parts of this card the road the fields or the town i like claiming towns because that's a potential for a lot of uh, and uh, a lot of um, points. So I'm going to say that. So that's my move. I placed a card. I placed a man. And now the uh, other players are going to do their thing. Oh, see, he's already built a city. That gave him four points. You get the idea. We're going to try Vi to control uh, roads, control cities. The person who does the best job of that wins. I like this idea here. Here. No, maybe people are going to see that I'm not really great at this. He's already got <laughs> that. It's a really, does this seem, now I have to say, this is a fun game to play mm -hmm. um, because uh, it's there's a lot of strategy. I mean, this is, right. this is That's... you know, chess level strategy. It's also fun because you're competing. They're fa it's fairly quick. A, a game shouldn't take more than an hour. And if people are, are relatively speedy in their moves, it'll even be faster than that. Uh, yeah, I like to do that. So I couldn't claim the road there because he's already, the greening guy's already got, got that road. So we're going to, I won't play on and on and on with this, but this saves you a lot. You can imagine doing this in the real world. You need a big table, you got yes. a lot of cards, they spread out. Uh, the, the quality of the players is going to vary. This is one where you want to play with the same people over and over again to kind of understand their style. And, uh, and I think it's a really fun game. I'm a big fan of Carcassonne. I would strongly suggest uh, doing it in uh, the real world. But if you can't find a player, uh, or maybe it's too complex to do all that placing of cards and placing of people and all that stuff, um, this is, a, a, I would say, is a very good as you, uh, uh, implementation of this. Uh, and as you can see, uh, it has all the expansion packs and stuff. So, Is there a way to, uh, does it have one of those modes where I can generate a code and you can send it to people and then you can play together? You know, I haven't played uh, online. Uh, that's an interesting, uh, you know, let me see if uh, I can go back. Because that'd be super cool if you could play it with friends and family who are elsewhere. As opposed to randomly selected people online. It looks like I can register it 
register an account. Let's just see. I wish it would let me. I love it when they let me use Apple to do that, right? It's yeah, so much faster. It's so much faster. Um, you know, I did not bother to investigate that. But I'm going to guess that that's the case, that you could probably set up a game code and say, all right, everybody, let's play together. Because you don't want to play with randos. You really right. do want to play with the same people over and over again, like your Monopoly game. Yeah. Yeah. That would be nice. Yeah. Your turn. I could... I could beat you in Carcassonne. Do you think no, you would I want don't. to play that? Does that? Look? Yeah, I could see myself playing it for yeah. sure. Yeah, it's that that little bit of strategy where it's a little bit more of a brain tinkler. Oh, it's much more. And it every gives, yeah. what's nice is every game is completely different. Unlike Monopoly, where it's just, it's always the same. It's the same. Every time you play Carcassonne, it's a different landscape. Mm -hmm. it, it, you just it see, never. You repeats. get to build something at the that all that kind yeah. of stuff is really good fun to me and the one uh, advantage of having a computer do this is the scoring is a pain in the butt a lot of these tabletop games the worst part is the is the accounting and mm -hmm. uh and and the end of this game there's a lot of accounting <laughs> and so it's nice to have the computer to do that yeah uh the one that i want to talk about first because it is a little bit less platform agnostic is uh dice by peacock so oh, this app yes, you must is have. available must uh, in the App Store for $1.99, and it is created by the developer, James Thompson, who makes the PCALC calculator app. That's why it's called Dice by PCALC. But there are a lot of tabletop games that use these uh, polyhedral die and or polyhedral dice, and uh, this is a great app for doing true random or I guess pseudo random roles. Uh, and then you can set things up like I'll go into the settings. I can change the size of the dice. Uh, I can change the I can add sounds if I want to. You can have them actually speak those results out loud. There are different styles available. Wow, he for made those this dice. elaborate. I thought it was just an Easter egg. <laughs> it's just very elaborate. Yeah, it's a full on uh, system now. Uh, so I can change sort of the uh, tint and the text of the dice. Now, are you? Do you play D and D? Are you? A, you seem like I, you might have. Yeah, so I'm a huge. In fact, um, every Tuesday today is one of those days uh, at. Uh, 5 p.m. Pacific time, I play live. We we stream it live online. You're um, a Dungeons and Dragons game. Where would I Not find kidding. that? Uh, you can head to. It would be the. What is it live? Is it on Relay so the FM? The incomparable dot com oh, slash live. So Jason Snell's the incomparable. Got yeah, it. at uh, 5 p.m. Pacific, other times and other places. Uh, if you head to the incomparable.com slash live, you can also follow my Twitter account because I usually will retweet that we're live. But yeah, I play a uh, half elf druid named Elevor, and we're currently <laughs> in the midst of a wild chase against a vampire lord. So it's been That's pretty wild. Hysterical. Oh, um, I got to watch it. Who else plays with you on that? Dan Morin, yeah. uh, noted author. Um, Aline Sims, a podcaster and uh, the person, the first person who got me into podcasting. Um, Jane Ritt, uh, she is an educator and also a big tabletop gamer. Uh, Tony Sindelar, who is the Dungeon Master, he is also a huge Dungeon Master tabletop gamer. And Erica Inson, who is a... Um, I think Nebula award-winning podcaster who does a Doctor Who podcast. See, so, yeah, I, she's one it, it might be generational. I must have just missed this. The the D and D generation. D &D, yeah, yeah. Because I I never played it. I've literally never played it. Oh man, Leo, it's so much. I mean, I, see, you have the right. It it requires. You need a, a little, good dungeon master, a storyteller. You need teller. a good dungeon master, yeah. absolutely. And you need character. I feel you need players who want to buy into the world. You know, you don't want someone who's just going to kind of sit there and ho hum, la da di da, uh, but actually buy into the world and play. Because it's it's essentially you're all making a story together. That's the right. whole point of the game. Right. And so that's what's so much fun. There was one point. I know I'm going off off script here a little bit, but there was one time where. Everything worked out perfectly. So one of the, the the skills of a druid is that they can convert themselves into animals. It's called wild shape. And that's obviously part of the reason why I wanted to be a druid. Um, and so I had turned into an octopus. And I was we were fighting this 
a water dragon and I had gone into the water dragon's hoard and found a potion of flight and oh, okay come on come on I found a potion of flight so I was a flying octopus it was hilarious it was amazing it was so much fun now the thing that people have to understand is there's no picture of a flying octopus this is all in your <laughs> it's mind all in your head yeah yeah <laughs> Which I guess exactly. is the best place to make this picture. You know, I'm looking at the, the D and D was first released in 1974, and that's why I'm not because I would have been a freshman in college. It hadn't quite gotten through college, you know, oh. to the college crowd yet. I probably literally missed this by a couple of years. That makes sense because you got to yeah. do this in college, right, or or high school. You can't do it in real life first. <laughs> Right. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. Well, I mean, you maybe. could if now, you're really especially. nerdy. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I think, especially. I like it that you can uh, do this online. Used to I be, will you'd say, go, you know, the back of the game shop and then set up a card table and you'd all play together, right? Yeah. And in fact, um, or as in Stranger Things in the nerdy kids' basement. <laughs> exactly. Right. Yeah. You'd get together and you right. would do it there. Uh, and in fact, that was kind of one of the things that popularized it for sure. Um, Stranger whoops. Things. Yeah. 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 Popularize it again, I should say. Um, but there are some <clears throat> visuals as well. So I'll just show here. You can see that as we're playing, characters are there on the left, that we've got a map that the that people who tune in can see live. So there's an aspect of it that's got oh, some visuals to go okay. along with it. Well, I'll have but to yeah, watch that. The, the incomparable.com slash live, 5 p.m. Uh, is it every Tuesday? Uh, almost every Tuesday. Okay, we Pacific and Tuesdays. All right. Yeah. Anywho, but Dice by PCALC, uh, the reason why do I wanted to talk about that. Do you guys use that? Uh, yeah, most of us do. Yeah. Um, we also, I have some actual physical dice as well. So if Dice by Peacock does some rolls that I'm not happy with, it's random, obviously, then I'll say, oh, no, I'm switching to my real dice <laughs> <laughs> and then go back whenever inevitably I get a one with my real dice. So uh, it, it's all silly. But that is because... This dice app has the polyhedral dice that you need for so many different types of of tabletop games. There are you some need that, as many surfaces as you need, which could yes, be what exactly. twenty or more, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, twenty or more. Yeah. So there's there's one. I mean, there is a whole bunch of different kinds that you might need, and and twenty is the most common one in Dungeons and Dragons. You roll a d twenty, um, and that kind of helps shape what you do in the game. Uh, so yeah, Dice by Peacock available for a dollar ninety nine in the App Store. There are other dice apps out there. Um, with Dice by Peacock, you're supporting you know a, a great developer, but yeah. also the different types of styles of of dice is one of my favorite things about it. There are yeah. so many different kinds you yeah. can use. Yeah. What's next from you, Leo? Well, I'll show you another game uh, uh, that I think is a really fun again tabletop board game. But nicely, I I would say very nicely um, moved to the uh, to the uh, the iPad. The iPad really makes a very good way to play these games because it's especially if you have a the bigger iPad, uh, it's big enough to see the game. Um, it, it you know it's I wouldn't play this on a phone probably. This is right. uh, this is called Ticket to Ride, and I'll just tap the icon here and we can start playing. So this is a not so dark. Sometimes people don't like the kind of medieval flavor of a lot of these games. Uh, this genre is more like 19th century railroading. But you, and again, they have an online version as well as local. Um, and you have to create a Days of Wonder account, which I probably have done, but I'm going to pretend I... Uh, I, I think we're just going to skip the online play. We'll just show you the local play. But again, that's a nice version. And see, they, they make a little money, a little extra money. These all are a couple of bucks to get them basic game. And then there's in-app purchases where they can make a little bit of money. So we could play solo, which is just by myself. Local, which is, I assume is more like pass and play, where we're playing with other people, but we want the iPad to do the work. Let me just play solo for oh, right now. Oh, so I bet local is the, the game code registering thing. So we could play, Leo. We could play Ticket to Ride together. You would, I think, enjoy this game. Yeah, so I create a game, and then we play on the local uh, um, uh, Wi-Fi, right? And you can even say Apple devices only or not, if you, you know... 
uh, you can choose the map. But let, let's just just cause for purposes of uh, showing you what the game looks like. Yeah, yeah. And sure. the same idea. I can add players. Uh, I can make the players be uh, different. Um, we probably should if they're all the same name. That's going to be very confusing. And then we can play. We're going to take turns trying to build a railroad across the United States. The longest route is worth 10 points. You start with 45 cars. And you can lay track. You're going to get these cards you see on the right. And we can lay track across the United States. So they're dealing out the cards that will be my uh, cars from this deck. And then I will play first. So I... I, we don't really need to go on and on, but um, so this is, I can choose which route I want to build, Toronto to Miami, uh, Helena, Montana to Los Angeles, or should we go for the big one? This is a 22-pointer. That is Seattle to New York. So I'm going to choose two tickets, two different routes I want to build. You get the idea. It's You know what? Mm -hmm. If you think about it, Structurally, this isn't so different from Carcassonne. We're trying to take over territory by building railroads. And there are, of course, you know, obscure rules and so forth. And I can drag my car to somewhere, depending on the route that I want to build. I think we'll do that. Oops. Oh, I have to use a blue, blue one here. Nope. All right, you can see that I have not played this game in a long time. There we go. So we're... <laughs> <laughs> so you get the idea, I guess. I mean, I think I don't need to belabor this. Lots of people love this game. You can see if we were playing in the real world, we would actually... It's actually a little different in the real world because you don't have a map. You're just laying down the track. But it's a fun game. I think it's a lot of fun. I think you would like it. It is more that, nine, you know, the, the um, roaring 20s. Actually, it's even more the gay 90s feeling. Um, and so it's a little lighter, a little more fun. Kids might like it a little bit better. Ticket to Ride. And I think this is a fairly good implementation, especially because uh, you could have it be pass and play, so you could still play it as a tabletop game without all the cards and the die and all the different things you know that you'd have to be passing out, doling out. Less accounting, always good. <laughs> exactly. Actually, you've handl you're handling the accounting side of this. I'm doing the games. You're doing the accounting. Oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. Exactly. Yeah. In fact, uh, my next accounting, uh, for my next trick, I want to talk about Reroll. Reroll is a free app that lets you uh, – it, it shows you how to create characters and you can that, – that, that's often one of the problems. Anytime you start a new game that you want to play with your friends in the – specifically in the sort of D&D &D, uh, role-playing game space. So it doesn't just have to be D&D &D, but any of those role-playing games. You need to create a character and your game master or dungeon master will ask you for a uh, an icon that represents your character. Uh, Reroll was created to help you facilitate that. And so there are two ways that you can go about doing things. You can just create a character. So I'll hit that plus button in the top right corner and make some character art if I want to. But it also walks you through the creation of, uh, of, of a character specifically for Dungeons & Dragons. So I'm just going to do the character art only section just so you can see how it works. Uh, you can choose the type of race that you are. So we'll do... Um, let's go with a Furbolg and <laughs> we could choose a masculine character, a feminine character. I just did a feminine character. So we'll do a masculine character. This and this time. is for Dungeons and Dragons again. This, this is for most of the role-playing okay. tabletop games. Tabletop yeah. role-playing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we can choose a body a type. Did you use this to create your elf? I didn't. I didn't know that this existed at the time. Yeah. Uh, this is a really nice thing. And so I had to use some sort of stock art um, to create my character. Oh, so you I'm can actually make... use this as your uh, as an image for your game. Yes, exactly. Nice. And nice. a little character that can walk around in the in the game. So we'll choose that. You know, I can make adjustments to the facial hair. I'm just going to move through this a little quickly. Um, different hair types, bald, a big afro, kind of cool. Uh, yeah, let's go with that. <laughs> and then ears, because it's a fur bulg, we can make adjustments to the ears. We'll stick with the standard ones. Um, and then what do we call this fur bulg, Leo? Uh, Herman the Conqueror. 
determine the conqueror. Point is a con. Yeah, there we go. And oh, maybe I guess his name should be Herman. And then we'll put uh, his short bio down at the bottom. Herman, the Holy Conqueror. Herman, the Holy Conqueror. Whoops. All right. Boom. We can tap done. And then we've got Herman there. Uh, then, this is cool, you can make adjustments to his inventory. You can add uh, different icons for maybe he's wearing a weird eagle mask or he has a panda bear on his face, which doesn't work with the hair. So I'm just going to go with some goggles for him. Um, you can change his shirt. And you get the idea here. This lets you create not only a character, but equip the character with the equipment that you would actually have. This pulls, these icons are created based on uh, what types of, of content you can get in most of the tabletop role-playing games. So you'll notice that, you know, across the game, if you have leather boots equipped, then it's very easy to find some leather boots. And so your character can be pretty accurate. Uh, maybe Herman the Holy Conqueror has a halo, for example. And his pants are obviously not pants. <laughs> uh, and he's got some clothes, some, what are those, van braces as well. Um, Going to equip his little lower icon there. I think that he's probably, yeah. And then his weapons. Holy cow. This is a lot. Yeah, it gets pretty detailed. So there's no, if, there's no, you could just do whatever you want. There are rules. So <laughs> are there this, any rules? There this seems are, like there, there are, are rules. This seems like anarchy. This is anarchy because I'm just showing what's oh, available okay. to okay. you here. <laughs> but yes, you couldn't just get away with this. But then afterward, you can then share your character. That's okay. That email is out there already. Um, you can share your character with your dungeon master, with your other, uh, you know, your fellow game players. And then you can also download uh, the PNG and the character sheet if you so choose to create one all from within this one app. So what I love about this is say you're new to Dungeons and Dragons or one of the other tabletop role playing games and you have no idea what you're doing. You can get this one app and it will not only do the character sheet, but it'll allow you to create your character. And I found that creating the actual look of my character was one of the things that helped me kind of start to care about that character and actually sort of get into character and be excited about what that character was going to do. Uh, so it's helpful to have both of those things at once and kind of have that in your mind as you're going about creating it. Nice. What's next for you? Uh, and I should mention that uh, Carcassonne was uh, $5. Uh, ticket to ride is $7. 7 seems to be kind of the normal thing for these kinds mm -hmm. of, if they're the official game. And that sounds like a lot for an iOS game. But the actual board game, because of all the pieces and stuff, usually is a lot more expensive, $35 or more. So, you you know, you're getting a deal. I'm going to show uh, what a game that came out uh, about five years ago and quickly became one of the most popular um, tabletop board games of all time. There, it's even spawned some simple versions like a card game. I really like Istanbul, and it's a fun game to play. Uh, now we're in the, uh, the, the bazaar in Istanbul, okay? So this is a little bit different because you are a merchant, you have assistants, and you are sending them out to shop in the bazaar. The best thing about the actual board game is it comes with plastic rubies. <laughs> and the merchant with the most rubies oh, at the end of fun. the game wins. It's and I really enjoy that as your tokens of victory. So you can see we're looking at the tutorial right now. Uh, it's, it's a fairly complicated game. That's one of the reasons they created a card game that's a little simpler little less expensive too let's meet in the sultan's palace to buy your first ruby together so i'm going to go to the sultan's palace and we're going to pick up a ruby welcome let's assume we are now rivals in order to take action in a location where another merchant is located you have to pay him two lira so it's always worth having a small sum with you let's practice i'm going to pay that guy 
and he's going to let me into his location. So we're going to send out merchants, uh, assistants throughout the bazaar. We have a wheelbarrow, which is a strange item. Uh, but the, in the wheelbarrow, we uh, gain more uh, goods, but also more capabilities. Main menu. Thank you. Finally, finally. So we can do an online game. Uh, again, I have to create an account to do that, which I'm not going to do. And uh, I can't even get out of this. Uh, they're yeah. back. Uh, let's do a new local game. And again, we can create AIs and we can give them different skill sets. Ooh, I am loving the music. Isn't it great? This is really good. Yeah. So we'll just do randomize. We'll create some random, random opponents there. Uh, now, we can choose the game settings. We can choose short path or long path. We can do it in order. We can do it random. Do we want neutral assistance or do we want our assistance not to be neutral? Let's start the game. So, yeah, you could see this is this is a little more strategic. Uh, there's a lot more mechanics to it. Uh, if you've already played Istanbul a few times, we recommend we you try this more tactical variant. You can change how your assistants are configured. So this is really this is this is an official uh, adaptation of the game, and so it's really designed to give people who love the game a little bit more of uh, a sense of the game. I personally think it's more fun to play this game tabletop than it is to play it on the iPad. And I would say that's true actually of all of these games. But nowadays, maybe you can't. Maybe you want to play online against friends. Um, you know, if you're socially distancing, this is a an alternative. And I know. Uh, well, actually, I'll let you do a couple more, and then I have I added one more that I didn't have before, which is I realize all these games are perhaps a little too complicated, especially for uh, kids. So I've got a game one. you can play with kids. It's a great card game. Um, it used to be from Milton Bradley. It's really fun to play on iOS. So well, I'm going to show you that when after yours, your next. Yeah. One. So I've just got two more. Um, these are also uh, these ones do focus on D and D as well. It's the most uh, one of the most popular tabletop role playing games, and D and D has been work. The company Wizards of the Coast has been working to create iOS tools that make it easier for you to play. Uh, using your iOS devices. And so I want to give them credit where credit is due. And that includes a new app uh, that just came out called D&D Beyond Player Tools. This is uh, D&D Beyond Player Tools. Ooh, and this is as I nice. mentioned, this is fancy. here is Elevore, uh, my half-elf druid. So you were um, able to enter an existing character in there. Yeah, yeah. So this is yeah, this is the character that um, over time has has grown to level seven. Um, these are his is different. That pretty uh, high. It sounds pretty low. It it is it is not super high, but it is not low. <laughs> Think of uh, level twelve as being max. Oh, okay. Being, you know, yeah, yeah, because like in, in World of Warcraft, you know, if you have a level seventy, then you're at the top. Right. Yeah. Okay. Seven is actually yeah. Seven's pretty high. Um, Add te times ten, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Um, so right now uh, I can see all of my different immediate scores. These are things where when you roll the dice, the 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 die rather the the twenty sided die, you know you'd subtract one if it was a strength roll or add two if it was a dexterity throw. Um, I've got different saving throws and senses, and then I can scroll through and see my different skills. So for example, there would come a time where I was talking to. Uh, a, a random non-playable character that the the dungeon master is pretending to be and I'm trying to persuade them I roll a 20 sided die and then I take that score of maybe 12 and I can add six to it because I have a plus six in my persuasion skill so it it's kind of fun where you would have that conversation and then the dungeon master would say okay it feels like you're trying to persuade this character with what you've just said let's do a roll to see how well that affected them um you can see the different tools that I have. I've got a dagger and a scimitar. Uh, I could also do an unarmed strike, like a punch or something like that. So it shows all of my different skills here. And then it even goes as far as to show my uh, equipment and 
more important, most importantly for a druid, the druid's spells that he has. Um, so everything is available in here. You can track all of those things. So I can subtract hit points as I'm attacked. Uh, if I get temporary hit points to add to my total, I can add that as well. Um, I currently have inspiration. That is a thing that a dungeon master can give out based on how well the the player can acts. you give out. R e s p e c t, because that's <laughs> well, what it really same thing. means to me. Um, inspiration is a way to get to re-roll the die at any point in the uh, game that you want. Ooh, so wow. yeah, the, the dungeon master will typically give that out if a character is if a per player is doing really well, like role playing the game. It seems like this encourages favoritism. I don't know. You got to trust we your dungeon master, don't you? Yeah, exactly. And yeah. he's really good. At, yeah, he's good at it. Yeah. Anyway. Um, I, I have to, like I said, I have to give credit where credit is due because uh, Dungeons and Dragons it's, or the Wizards of the Coast came out with D&D Beyond, which was uh, originally, and I'm going to show you the other app here, uh, just a way to w look at your, your player, uh, the books that you had purchased, the content that you had purchased. And so you could see, you know, the books, um, the uh, character guide and all of that information and it didn't used to be as helpful as it was because you couldn't keep track of your character in it it only lets you see you know uh what how the game is played so you'd have like your rules and stuff like that in there um that is the D, &D beyond app now my voice is trying to go away on me <clears throat> And that exists as a separate app that you can get uh, for free with in-app purchases. And it has the player's handbook, the basic rules, the dungeon master's guide. So anyone wanting to you know, try this out for the first time, you need to have the dungeon master's guide. You need to have the player's <laughs> handbook a nerd. in order to, to understand how to play. So <laughs> those are the two that I wanted to mention. <laughs> Leo, take us away with right. your... A little uh, less nerdy, app. kids. Just a touch... Less nerdy. Have you ever played, and this is actually one, I thought I'd add this because I realized the kids are going to be left out of a lot of this stuff. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us are stuck home with kids, right? And we want to involve them in this. And, you know, you give you give a 10-year-old Carcassonne, unless, I mean, some really bright and motivated 10-year-olds probably would love these board games. When they get to be about 14, I think that's really, they, there's a sweet spot. Um, but this is a game that even a six-year-old will love. Have you ever played Mealborn? It was a nope. great card game from Milton Bradley. I'm going to have to turn this one on its side because, I don't know, maybe, maybe it does do it uh, horizontally. Um, so, unfortunately, um, the, my favorite version of Mealborn, which was from, um, I don't know who it was from. It, the original card game is Milton Bradley. I think that it's... Uh, doesn't own it because I see a lot of variations and adaptations of it. Uh, my favorite was, because <clears throat> it's a French game, based on the French comic book Tintin. You remember that? Um, maybe you don't. It, but it was a wonderful, it had the Tintin characters. That f got pulled, and I don't know if it got pulled because, maybe it got pulled because uh, it wasn't an official version of it. I'm not sure. This is the official uh, version, I think of Mealborn. It is a card game and you can choose classic or course players. You could play this in the pass around mode. In fact, I think it's the only way you can play this. Uh, you get dealt a set of cards. It is a really fun card game. And if you have the Mealborn cards, again, it's probably more fun to play this. The idea is you're going to play these cards and try to win a road race against your opponent. You have cards that will get you going but you have cards that will also stop your opponent but the first oh. card you need is a green light card because you can't play the, go. the mileage cards until you've got a green light you have a repair card these are mileage cards which will send you respectively 25 50 and 70 miles along the road meal born means uh uh i think it's their mileage markers thousand it means thousand markers this is a red light you don't play that to you you play that on your opponent which means they can't go anywhere and this is a speed limit which says your opponent can only go 50 i'm gonna say kilometers an hour so oh um, that's nice yeah so i don't know where i'm playing this i guess i can't play it where I don't know what's going on. Because you don't have a green light yet? or No, no, I should be able to play at least the stoplight card. Because then if 
he gets a green light. Oh, I don't understand how this game works. I can throw it out. Maybe I have to play it. Oh, I do. I play it on him there. So I've played a stoplight card on him, which means even if he gets a green light, he can't. Oh, he does get a green light. But that not now he's only overcome the stoplight card. Gotcha. So now I'm still waiting for my green light. I've got well, a, a gas a gas card, which will give me gas. I've got good mileage cards, a repair card, because he can force me to break down or run out of gas. I can't really do anything at this point. So I'm going to trash one of my low-level cards. See if I can get a better card out of this one. He can't go 75. Oh, I guess he can. He's gone 75 miles. Now, this is not, I have to say, this is not a great implementation because I don't see the course. I don't know what's going on here. Yeah, how do you know? Yeah, where? you know, boy, I wish the Tantan -tan one were still around. You didn't even have a green stop. I don't know what's going on here. I don't <laughs> understand it. This is not the traditional meal bone I know. Well, no, hey, if I can play the big cards, I'm playing them. Um, so we, we do know where we are, but... You know, you really, the best thing about the iPad games, this isn't a great one. This is the only one, unfortunately, the only one that's uh, on, which makes me think that the folks who own the rights to this said, no, no, <laughs> no, no, you may not do a Mealborn. <laughs> if you can find the Tantan -tan version of Mealborn, I showed this years ago. It is awesome. It has all the characters from the comic book series. It has a course. There's lots of emotion. It's really fun. Uh, I have to say, I'm a little disappointed yeah, that by this like one. It could be fun if it was. It's not. Done it's properly. a buck ninety nine. Um, so I guess I didn't need a green light to start. I just needed it uh, if I had a red light, and that's why when he got his green light, he could go. So uh, um, I'm not crazy about that implementation. So I'm not going to recommend it. But I will recommend the Milton Bradley card game, which you can buy at your local uh, game store because it's a lot of fun, and that's when kids can play. It's a step above Uno. Which is anybody, yes. you know, kids can play, but it's kind of dopey. Um, I think Millborn is like all the fun of Uno, but a little more sophisticated. And that right. is our tabletop gaming. Oddly enough, um, you are the most nerdy of the two. Well, you did say, you said, I'm not a nerd. So I didn't know that. I'm not you don't that kind yourself of nerd. A nerd. Well, I'm a geek, but I don't know if I'm a nerd. Okay. So tell me the difference. I believe. Okay. Yes. Yes. For you, what is the difference between a nerd and a geek? A yeah. nerd is almost an insult. A nerd is just somebody with poor social skills. Interesting. Uh, I believe a geek, on the other hand, is somebody who cares more about what's going on above the belt than below the belt. They're more, and they tend to have very distinct passions. So it is possible, I think, to be a tabletop geek. Uh-huh. A tabletop nerd implies somebody with poor social skills. Gotcha. You know and I Interesting. Don't, I don't feel like... I don't think that just because you're a geek, you have to have poor social skills. Right. So I think they're separate. Uh, on the other hand, that's just my definition. Cause right, that's I, yours, yeah. A lot of people think that all geeks are nerds. Mm. I would say... There is an intersection of geeks and nerds, but not all nerds are geeks and not all geeks are nerds. In other words, you could be a tabletop gamer, nerd, and not be into technology, right? Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. a nerd. Geeks really, I think, uh, tend to be into technology. That's hmm. just my definition. Right, you know what exactly. I'd like to talk about? Because geeks and nerds, as well as normal people, <laughs> or as we call them, <laughs> normies... Normies. Normies yeah. need to pay attention to grooming. Don't you think our sponsor... A thousand percent. Our sponsor, Manscaped, is all about manly grooming tools. Let me open my Manscaped box here. I've got... Oh, I love this. This is a great gift. If you are... If you are uh, sheltering in place with a gentleman, <laughs> you may indeed have occasion to make some suggestions toward better grooming that's when this manscaped kit comes the perfect package 3.0 comes into play this is one of many devices offered by manscaped in the perfect package 3.0 this is incredible the lawnmower 3.0 
which is a amazing waterproof cordless body trimmer that has ceramic blades and operates at 7,000 RPM. That super high speed means fewer nicks. Well, no nicks. You can't really nick yourself or cut yourself with this. It's a safe thing, and it even has a special headlight so when you're going down those dark tunnels, you can see clearly <laughs> where you're grooming. And listen how quiet it is. It's so quiet. You can go into the bathroom, do a little grooming, and no one will even know, but you will uh, emerge. excuse me while I freshen up for a pristine moment. Pristine into the world. It also comes. Angels with, will sing. Ah, it also comes with a beautiful crop preserver, the reviver, uh, <laughs> the uh, cleanser. It even has a foot deodorant, which is nice. In fact, when I but when I do, I love this incredible mm -hmm. manscaped um, shaving kit, which is really beautiful and nice. It's a luxury travel bag. You also get a pair of anti-chafing boxer briefs. No chafing is another important part of life. The trimmer, the 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 travel bag, the boxer briefs, all of this in that famous Perfect Package 3.0 plus Peak Hygiene Plan. Ooh, you don't have to worry about keeping your blades sharp either. Manscaped will send you replacement blade refills every three months when you purchase the Perfect Package. This is a great gift. No commitment. You can cancel any time, but what a great gift to send somebody. Now, I want to show you something new they just sent us. Are you excited about this? You had this all along. Yes. The new Shears 2.0 <sighs> Nail grooming. Look at kit. that gorgeous case. Watch this. I love this. We open it up. We pull the little tab, and here's your nail grooming kit. This notice, by the way, the metal box. So it's this is a really nice case. You get everything you need in here. A perfect pair of tweezers. You get the best nail. Lisa said that this morning. She stole mine. She said these are the best nail clippers I have ever used. See that? And it's got a little file built in. I think this is a really nice. She says these are super sharp. Oh, yeah. You can tell nice. it's got a nice, um, like, what is the word I'm looking for? Leverage. It's got good leverage. Oh, so really good nails. leverage. Yeah. Really good leverage. And I love how they make it into this little compact form. Here's your nail file, your cuticle trimmer with the special tips so you don't actually stab yourself. They're all, they're really in into safety while you're doing the grooming. I love this Shears 2.0 uh, kit. It uh, get those talons in tip top shape for the summer, <laughs> and uh, yes, it's okay, gentlemen, to use this on your toesies as well as your fingersies. Uh, in fact, I would highly encourage it because if you're going to be wearing those sandals, you don't want to have to wear socks. That's just a bad look. Oh God, please don't. Please, no yeah. socks with sandals, folks. Uh, the Shears 2.0 is. I think this is a beautiful kit. I really do. And actually, I now it's so compact. It's about the size of a business card case. If it kind of reminds me of a business card case. And if somebody sees it, they won't immediately go, oh, you're carrying, well, maybe the Manscaped logo would give it away. But you're carrying, it looks like a business card case, but inside, mm -hmm. true nail grooming. Now, I am not going to the manicurist. I think it's important. I'm going to actually say something about this because I don't think guys really get it. But ask your significant other how important it is to have clean, well-groomed nails. And you may be surprised at how high they, this is like, they judge you mm -hmm. by your nails. I don't think people know that. I think a lot, I see a lot of guys with really scraggly nails, you know, uh, cuticles all over the place, hang nails, long nails, weird nails. I was watching, <laughs> I'm not kidding, I was watching David Letterman a few, some years ago when he was still on TV and I saw his nails. I said, <gasps> I was actually, I, I gulped, I gasped. <gasps> now, because I often am demonstrating things with my fingers, like on mm -hmm. today's show, uh, I make sure that my nails are uh, look good. But it yeah. turns out it's also really important for the loved ones in your life that you don't have talons, but you have nicely groomed nails. I don't, I don't know how to emphasize that more. Just just ask a lady ask, friend. Yeah. You know, hey, you know, how important? They judge you. If your nails are clean, well-groomed, they might even think about going out with you. So, folks, you can't go. You can't go to the manicurist, but you can go to manscaped.com/twit right now. You'll get twenty percent off plus free shipping. I want to again say that waterproof cordless body trimmer and the perfect package three point kit is 
unbelievably great. I mm -hmm. have the U it's a USB charger. I keep it on my sink. I never have no, you know, any grooming emergency. I'm re I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready. Uh, and by the way, it has uh, one of those guides, so I don't want to be um, naked to the Bold. world. Yeah, I I like to have a little bit of something going on down there. I just want to keep the hedges in line, and for that, the 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 uh, guide is really useful. Uh, and I do think it's so important that you groom your nails. And I think this is another great. Does not come with a perfect package, but you should take a look at the Shears 2.0 nail grooming kit. They just put this new one out this month to get it's your gorgeous. talons in tip-top shape. By the way, I should mention, uh, we don't mention this often, and I, I want to mention this. Manscaped cares about men and wants to do the right thing for their berries. That's why they're raising awareness about testicular cancer. Did you know, young man... It is the most common form of cancer among men age 15 to 35. Wow. The most common form. So Manscaped's partnered with the Testicular Cancer Society to uh, educate on the importance of early detection and screening. So, I, you know, I think for a company that specializes in grooming those testiculars... <laughs> <laughs> it's good that they also support t t testic testicular health. With Manscaped, you have everything you need to trim up and defuzz for the summer. You know the worst thing? You put on a bathing suit and there's hair sticking out. No. Oh, God. No. This may not happen. This must not happen. Dudes, <laughs> get real. Manscaped.com slash twit. You'll come out of quarantine feeling fresh. We do. Our swim center opened up. That's really a nice thing. They're doing it all right. There's social distancing and spaced out the lanes and all that. You reserve a lane. but So you might be putting on that bathing suit this summer. You want to manscape first. Man, you don't want to look like, my God, he's been in a cave for the last four months, even though you have. <laughs> Manscaped.com slash twit. 20% off. I think this Shears uh, nail grooming kit is a must. I, you know, I, don't, I still don't feel safe going. In fact, they just closed the manicurists mm -hmm. uh, again in our county. I don't feel safe going to places like that, but I do want to keep my nails nice. And I think, it, you know, I don't know about you, but I, th I think it does a pretty good job. I think yeah, that's pretty good. I agree. You know, I, I, do, miss, I do miss the polish. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but the final buffing the stage. Right? The buffing, you know, the shiny nails that you know you've been. And actually, this is better because it doesn't attract attention. It's just like well groomed. That's kind yeah. of what you want. You know, we're not talking being a peacock here. We're right. talking being a peahen. Yes, that's not what I meant Shh. to say. Manscaped. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, the peacock has the big feathers. The oh, male right, of the species, the, yeah. right, right, and right, the right. and the female of the peacock species, the peahen, it's sort of very yeah, drab and understated, dull, yeah. but nicely groomed. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, have you ever seen a peahen in the wild? Nice no, and groomed. No, they're never poorly groomed. Never. Never a shaggy peahen. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be a shaggy peahen. Go to manscaped.com slash twit. 20% off plus free shipping. And they sent us everybody. I think all the hosts got our shears kit. Uh, and I, I wish they'd sent me one more because Lisa keeps stealing mine. It's a really, <laughs> it's a really nice manicure kit. I actually keep it in my briefcase because you never know. You don't want to hang nail with, spoil a good day. <laughs> it can. Hate it. It can. Yeah. I used to when I was young. I used to bite my nails when I was a kid, and um, I don't know. Somehow I stopped, and now I really kind of I want to pay. I don't want. I want to pay attention to that. Mm -hmm. You know. Some I think one of my many wives, I think, <laughs> once told me, Leo, we look at the nails. We care about the nails. That's that's a way to judge a guy. You know, does he does he keep his nails clean and nice? Then we know he's gonna be well groomed. That seems sensible. Is yeah. it is it true among your people? Oh my god. <laughs> um I I have that thought about anyone, frankly. Yeah. I it, when I saw not, Letterman's talons, I said, That's disgusting. I, uh, yeah, I suppose I, you know, there are situations and reasons, but I do, you know, look at the nails and we if there's stuff the underneath the nails and you oh, go, oh, yeah. that's, yeah, that's not great. Yeah, you should have washed, should have bathed. That's my other tip, by the way. They don't sell one, but they really should. A nail brush is a wonderful thing. Oh, yeah. You were just talking about just the nail brush the I other am, day. I want to do a blog post 
because <laughs> I these are, I want to do a blog post things my father never told me about male grooming. Dad never told me all this stuff, and I kind of like that. Huh? That that sounds like a cool. I'm going to do uh, it's in, it's in the works, and one one of the tri one of the tips is a nail brush. In fact, I got I have one now that has uh, a, a narrow nail brush on one side and a wider brush on the other side, and I use that to exfoliate everywhere. Mm -hmm. Right? Just a light brushing everywhere. It's like Kataka. Remember that in the movie <laughs> where he's scraping all the DNA off? It's just a light de exfoliating head to toe. And I think my skin looks better because of it. Yeah, it makes you glow. Makes you glow. Well, it makes you, first it makes you red. <laughs> <laughs> and then it makes you glow. And then it makes you glow. What's the news really across the nation? Mike has got the information. First up. IOS public beta is here. Woohoo! We've all installed uh, it. He, many people have installed the public beta, uh, are trying it out for the first time, seeing how it works. Yeah, if you want to hop on the beta train, um, the IOS public beta here is here. It's at beta.apple.com. As soon as you uh, slacked me, I did it. What are you uh, thinking so far? How are you feeling about well, it? Well, you know, this is actually, this is a good, we could briefly, because we've already talked about iOS 14, but I, I put, you know, it's funny because the benefits on the iPad are lesser. You know, you don't get widgets everywhere, just on the left. Mm -hmm. um, there is one thing, though, I really like. This is weird. They don't even mention it. Jiggle mode, which is, you know, how you move stuff around or, or uh, delete stuff. Mm -hmm. Used to be you'd have to press and hold, and then they have the now they have the pop up that says, "Oh, do you want it?" And then so a few seconds later, jiggle mode. This is new, I think, in iOS 14. At least uh, I've never seen this before. If you press and hold in an empty space, it goes into jiggle mode right away. Boom! Nice. I Straight love that. There. So if keep Boom. a little empty space on every screen, makes it a little easier to rearrange. And I do like on iOS, uh, on the iPhone, I guess I should just say, if I say iOS, that's iPhone. If I say iPad OS, that's the iPad. I do like this far right screen where all of your apps are in an app library. It's not the categories I would use. Um, yeah, but yeah. But it's okay. And you know, when you write your own software, you, you can actually have your own folder. So there's the Leo Laporte folder. Oh, how nice. Isn't that, isn't that cool? So if you write your own iOS apps... Uh, what is that app? Well, I'll talk about that another time. Oh, is this new? Well, I've been, you know, I've been working my way through learning uh, iOS. Okay. Yeah. Okay. How to program in iOS. So this is just a little... This is from... Um, what, what book is this from? This might be from the the uh, Big Nerd Ranch book on uh, writing okay. iOS. But, it, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, I do like the widgets on uh, iOS on the on the phone. Uh, they do crowd out your icons, though. So now your your icon choices are gonna, might be a little bit more limited. But then you also have the Siri suggestion widget, which is nice. My favorite widget, though, is this stacked widget where you've got a mm -hmm. variety of things. Um so that's probably all I need to do is just use the stacked widget. But you see, I have the calendar widget. Most third-party apps don't yet have widgets. So that's, whoops. So that's not something that's uh, yet. So I have to use Apple's calendar instead of Fantastic Hal, my far, which I far prefer. As soon as I get a Fantastic Hal widget, I'll be very happy. Same. I can't yeah. wait for that. I've yeah. been waiting for that. And because it's not a widget, it also does not appear in the Today screen uh, until you scroll through the widget portion, and then you can get to the yeah normal. i wonder what they're going to do about that if those if those types of widgets are going to go away yeah i don't know because they're deprecated not deprecated but they're they're down below now they're like so last year so last year same thing on the ipad by the way the widgets take precedence uh on the top of the screen and and then as you scroll uh, down that's another thing that's a little weird um swiping is a little harder because you can't. You have to be careful what you're swipe. Well, actually, I haven't had that problem yet. All right, I take it back. For a while, I thought I couldn't swipe. Like a, swiping wasn't responsive, so I don't know about that. Um, I, you know, iOS 14 is nice. I now there are some issues. For instance, my bank USAA. Oh, it's okay now, but you saw earlier it popped up. Oh, you jailbreak your phone. You can't use mm -hmm. the app. So maybe mm -hmm. they've updated now and, and they fixed that because probably a lot of people complain. But some apps won't work. I had problems with messages coming up with a blank screen. 
I had to actually reboot my iPad before I could get messages to work again. So, but that's you expect a few bugs. It's surprisingly stable uh, for a public beta, I think. And if you like iOS 14, which I do, I think it's a big improvement, uh, and iPad OS, less, somewhat less so. And the scribble yeah. thing, that's cool. You can write with your pencil. I do like the scribble thing. Yeah. Um, it's not been perfect, but it's it's been a lot of fun. It's surprisingly um, good. I mean, that's a hard thing to do. My handwriting is Absolutely. Terrible. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see. Oh, for folks who aren't interested in checking out the public beta, uh, but want some new features, uh, it's likely that iOS 13.6 is right around the corner. Oh. Uh, they just released the golden master of iOS 13.6, which includes Apple News Audio, car key support, uh -oh. and some more things. So we talked a little bit about this before. Apple News, uh, I guess Apple News Plus Audio, was a feature that was going to add audio to articles in Apple News Plus. So you'd have your article and you could read it or you could listen to the article being read, but with, in theory, the voice of the person who had written the article. It's unclear if that's exactly what they're going to do or if they're going to have somebody else read the article. Uh, but I think it was Farhad Manju of the New York Times who had done uh, something like this where he read an article of his that was published. Oh. Um, so, yeah, kind of interesting stuff there. Did they? Uh, I wonder how that happened. Did they ask him to do that or? That see that that I think the Apple News Plus audio thing is really fascinating, but I don't know any of the behind the scenes it's stuff. Kind of I wish I did. putting them in the podcast business, sort of. Exactly. Yeah. And that's what makes it fascinating to yeah. me. Uh, and then car key for uh, folks who may not have heard about that. It's, it's like a digital key for your car. So uh, with automobiles if that accept your car it, support it. is a BMW. And I can't remember the model. The BMW 5 Series, five series. Uh, is currently the one that supports it. But there are uh, a load of cars that are supposed to support it in the near future. We'll see. Yeah. So it's yeah. far better than the current, you know, fob technique, which is not a, you know, that that actually is not very secure. Not very right. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah, you can look forward to that soon. In Although theory. other uh, there are other car manufacturers. Sam was telling me our car guy, Sam Abul Salmon, was telling me that there are some manufacturers who do their own thing and have even the same. I think was it Volvo that lets you send the key to somebody else and that kind of stuff. Oh so, really? Yeah, I can't remember who it was, but there's another car company that does that. I thought this was interesting. So with uh, with iOS 14, there is the alert when the app will look at your clipboard and try and pull something from it. Uh, we had talked before about how different apps, uh, TikTok was an example where it seemed every two or three keystrokes, it was uh, saying, hey, hey, uh, we're, I'm looking at your clipboard. I'm looking at your Sniffing clipboard. I'm looking your at your clipboard. clipboard. Sne exactly sniffing, sniffing your, clipboard. your clipboard. We found out what's why that's happening, by the way. And now LinkedIn is being sued. Yeah, that's BS. Because yeah. of yeah, this, it's a class action <laughs> lawsuit. LinkedIn said it was a bug. Tip top. Now everybody will fix it. But we, I found out what, what's going on. By the way, why okay. so many apps? Fifty six apps at last count. And I bet you, as more people use iOS fourteen, we'll find more. It's a Google ad feature. So if you, as many apps do, this is a very common, and I suspected it was this. There were just too many apps that had the same bug. Mm -hmm. If you copy and paste code uh, or use a library that Google provides for people who have Google ads in their apps, that's in the, that code. So uh, that's where the problem lies. Holy and moly. The suspicion is, and this, by the way, thank you, Louise Matsakis, who was on uh, Twit on Sunday. She told me this she's feature writer at uh, really good smart writer at wired um, she said what google's doing is looking at your clipboard for keywords to provide you with ads and so this is part of the google ad network uh, it's apps that have google ads and uh, the way to fix it is to turn that off <laughs> google ads i imagine google will fix it but that's she believes, and I think she's right. That's what they're doing. They're sniffing. They're not trying. They're not trying to get passwords. They're not trying to, you know, find out what your secret romance is. They're just looking for keywords, just as they used to do in Gmail. 
They're looking for keywords uh, on your clipboard so that they can feed you ads. All right. See, here's why this is frustrating to me, because for the longest time, I have been trying to convince my significant other that he he still has this fear. And I think that it becomes reasonable after a certain point, even though we know as, as tech people, it's not the case. He has this fear that different apps are listening to the things that he talks about. And I've explained, you know, if you are doing a search for this, if you are uh, Google searching this or you are on a certain app and you talk and you type about this or whatever, then your Google searches and all that kind of information will pull things up. But there have been times where we have had a conversation about a show and, uh, you know, he within the same day ends up showing me an ad on his phone for merchandise related to the show or uh, more information about the show yeah. or articles. Yeah. And I've been trying to, and he goes, see, they have to be, they have to be listening. I'm like, I promise you they're not using your microphone to listen to you. But this is something that I didn't know about that is very easily one of the ways that they're clearly sure. doing this. So the clipboard thing. You, that's the problem is that we're leaking information about ourselves all the time in all sorts of ways we're not aware of. And so I don't <sighs> think that Amazon Echo or uh, Siri or I don't think they're listening. Or the Instagram app or whatever. They're yeah, not listening my daughter to. said that her friend uh, shouted at the Instagram app, baby ducks, baby ducks, baby ducks, baby ducks, like 10 times. And then even though she'd never done anything else with baby ducks, started getting ads for baby ducks. So it's, <laughs> who knows? Who knows, you know? And I'm of course, have to test that myself. When TikTok does it, that's a little more concerning than when Microsoft's LinkedIn does it, by the way. Um, yeah. And I think it's pretty safe to say, great article by Ben Thompson on Stratechery about this today on TikTok. It's safe to say because of its... You know, the country TikTok comes out of, China, it's fairly safe to say that you could assume that that app is snarfing whatever data it can get. Mm -hmm. And so I am happy that Apple is being more proactive here and warning you when something like this is happening. I don't know if you should rely solely on it, but I think it's a thank you, Apple. It's a really good thing. I agree. I, I want to be aware of it <laughs> at the very least. Yeah. Um, there's a new report, it's an exclusive, about uh, we we saw during the keynote, the WWDC keynote, that the Apple Watch in the this next coming iteration of iOS or watch OS uh, will track dances. And, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> uh, it tracks of by course, the way, that's you know, the good tracking. It'll track it for yeah. the activity monitors. So you know yes, you exactly. got some calories burned. Yeah. You get your workouts in for yeah. doing uh, workout I style like to dances. Dance. Yeah. Well, this article goes into detail about how Apple went about getting this information and what it does to, uh, you know, properly track this stuff. So Apple put a bunch of uh, metabolic carts on dancers wow. and then had them perform the dances. And these carts, I guess, have a bunch of different uh, metabolic measurement tools. And then you can, you know, check the breathing response, the heart rate, and all of that information to get a proper and accurate measure of caloric expenditure during a dance workout. Um, Apple included, said that when they first came out with the watch, they said they were doing this with other workouts like rowing and, uh, and uh, you know, I don't know, bicycling. And they even showed video of athletes with masks on them and motion trackers and all of this stuff as they did these exercises so they're just that's how they add a new exercise they have to monitor and and see first of all how you detect it reliably uh and yeah. then second how do you measure the metabolic effect of those uh, exercises i i honor again i honor apple for doing this uh, event this effort yeah i think it's really great uh i love this uh, they would put um they would put on their wrist, you know, the Apple Watch and then have all of the other stuff strapped to them as well. Yeah. And they would try to figure out how wrist movement related to hip movement. So when a wrist goes this way, what does that mean for a hip on average? And then they took all of this information using uh, the accelerometer and the gyroscope to detect the difference between dancing with just your arms, just your lower body or dancing with your entire body and then added in the heart rate data to double check 
And so that way it would remove extra calorie credit for just moving your arms or add in calorie credit if you were doing more than just that. So it's taking your heart rate to sort of use for body movement as well as your wrist movements to determine how the rest of your body moved and all of that information together properly with different things canceled out so that it was as accurate as it could be. So if I just do the Elaine dance, I'm not going to get credit. (laughs) Right. I'm not no, moving well, my get, body. You get as much credit. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It'll only be the calorie burn for the, for for the, the thumb. Arm movements. Yeah. The thumb <laughs> movement. Yeah. Yeah. So I thought that was pretty a pretty interesting thing. You can read the rest of it. It was the... Um, Hindustani is it Hindu Times. Times? Yeah. Hindu, okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, ba, 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 ba. Oh, let's move on to feedback. Feedback questions. F- from you, the listener. Yes. So Jeff wrote in to say, last night... I got a warning. I can read it. I got a warning. Tell me a magnetic accessory is not certified for my iPhone and could be degrading my camera. I recently got the iPhone SE upgrading from the iPhone 6A. I used the case uh, Alex Lindsay from MacBreak Weekly recommended, the Vena V-Commute. Since the SE was the same size, I just transferred the case over to the new phone. He'd never seen that warning before. That's interesting. Yeah, so that Dropbox link, that's my Dropbox. If you want to uh, open up that, that yeah that screenshot just so you can see what it shows wow that is uh, I- interesting now we know that um the iphone compass is magnetic mm-hmm. i did not know that i thought it was doing something else magically but no it's a magnet so any magnet near the compass will throw it off and you won't be able to get true north anymore yeah. on the other hand I'm sorry, magnetic north anymore. But on the other hand, uh, damaging the camera, that's another thing. It must be quite a magnet, and it must be near the camera. I think the thing it would damage is the uh, internal optical image stabilization. I think... Precisely. Yeah, those the camera elements move around in a, in a field, and it would uh, conceivably, those would be uh, fragile and damaged by a very strong magnet somewhere near the phone. So yeah, I would, I would trust it. <laughs> I would say yeah. don't use that. I like that Apple is putting up that warning. I wonder how many times they came across this uh, issue enough to, you know, provide right. that notification for folks. Well, they uh, strapped a, a, a whole broken? array of sensors on people, and they had them <laughs> <laughs> walk yeah. through magnetic <laughs> fields. No, I think it, I think that uh, that's interesting. Yeah, um, you don't Super get. Do you get that warning for the compass? I don't think you do. And I've always said it's because a lot of cases have magnets in them. And I've always mm-hmm. said, oh, that's fine. Don't worry about it. It's not going to damage your phone. It probably won't damage it. I notice it doesn't say damage. It says just yeah, it degrade says degraded performance. Yeah. But it is something to be aware of. Both your compass and now apparently optical image stabilization can be uh, affected. It it also uh, is using pixel shifting. And I wonder if that might also be affected. Pixel shifting, uh, I don't know if that's a mechanical. There, but there are definitely yeah, some mechanical know. things inside the camera. Yeah, I thought I found I just found that fascinating. Anyway, yeah. um, thank Jeff, you for so that. Thank you for sharing yeah. that. Yeah, uh, Paul writes in to say, "Hey, I'm trying to download the public beta of iOS 14, and for some reason, it's not recognizing my iPhone 11. It keeps on reverting to the following screen attached. And again, this is on my Dropbox. Any ideas? You can see there's no download button, but the grayed out image below. So if you scroll down, there's a part where it says." Um, download this profile to the iPhone. Yeah, install profile, and then the the button, keep going. It's grayed. Yeah, oh, you can't see it because it's so gray. <laughs> <laughs> You're just going to have to believe us. It's right here, but yeah. it's just so gray that you, you can't, wow. It's just not coming through. But That's it says, it's a grayed out button that says iOS device required for download. So you do have to make sure that your devices are registered First of all, so they know that using the same iCloud account that you're using for your developer account or your beta account. So make sure you log in with on the same iCloud account that your phone is logged in. And then you do have to download that profile. Yes. And it, it's a little bit different now than it used to be. There are a couple thoughts that I have here for you, Paul. So, yes, first, you head to beta.apple.com. Make sure that you've registered with that iCloud account for the beta. Then... Uh, check to make sure that uh, the profile is not already on your phone. So it used to be, to be that... To be clear, by the way, maybe, and I did this too. I did this on the web. Mm-hmm. 
you have to go on the device you want to download the profile. You have to go to that page. Mm -hmm. So that's really important. You can't do it from another device because it's a download link that has to download directly to your phone. So make sure you get your iPhone 11 and then go to beta.apple.com slash profile to download that profile. You'll get a grayed out button if you're on any other device. Yeah, exactly. So maybe uh, and that's then you have to on. you have to pop open once you've downloaded it, you have to pop open the settings app and then you'll see a little flag there at the top that yeah. says new profile. Uh, profile. New profile. Now install it. My other thought is this. If you are doing all of those things correctly. Make sure you're not in private browsing mode or that you don't have um, or temporarily that you don't have extra sort of either Safari. What am I trying to say? Safari cookies or all these things turned off because some of these um, devices will try to or some of those features will try to obscure the profile of your device meaning that the web browser and the site does not see it as an iphone but instead might see it as a you know mozilla it's it's accessing it via the mozilla browser um there are device profiles that different sites and different browsers will sort of pull from a device to figure out what you're what you're accessing from. And I wonder if if you're using some sort of private browsing mode or something like that, that it's obscuring the device profile so that the the site doesn't know that you're actually on an iPhone. That's my only other thought of what could be going on here uh, for why it's not recognizing it as an iPhone 11. Of course, make sure you're up to date. You've installed all the updates and all of that stuff. Yeah. Um, both of us did this did this exact process and it and it worked. But uh, it's conceivable that Apple has decided there's something about the what you have installed or the way your phone is set up that it doesn't want to do that. And we yeah. can't help you if that's no. the case. Is yeah. it time to put but on a hat? Follow up, follow up, Paul. Uh, I'd love yeah, to let hear us know that if it, yeah it you figure out. out what's going on. I'm it gonna, is time for us to put on hats. Yes, put on this hat because it's so cold outside. I need Big my special toothy. What is that? A brazier? What are you putting on there? Oh, oh no, that's I'm a putting chef's hat. A chef's hat. <laughs> Mine has little snaggle teeth in the front because I'm a dinosaur. That's ador. Is that new? That's adorable. Yeah, I don't think I've ever worn it before. Maybe I have. It's really a uh, winter cap. Wee oui, wee. Oui. <laughs> I believe these are made by a local artist, <laughs> a local dinosaur oh. artist. Why do we wear these silly things? I ask you. Oh, you're asking me. I'm asking you. <laughs> uh, you're asking me. Yes, we wear these silly things. Because it's time to cook. Because it is time to make a chicken pot pie. <laughs> uh, because we are so excited about our app picks. That we make these apps that we are either that are new to us and we want to share with you, or apps that we've used for a long time that we think you should know about. And I am excited to tell you about an app called Nudget. Yes, Nudget. N U D G E T. Not Nugget. And nudget. Not Nugget, but Nudget. If you are looking for a way to Nugget. very easily yeah. budget for yourself, oh. then you have got to check out Nudget. It it's is a budget with an N. Yes, exactly. It is a beautifully designed app. Um, this is the developer. His name is Sawyer. Uh, he works on. Uh, he works for Mozilla as an Android developer for Mozilla, which is interesting. That as an Android developer, he makes an iOS app, but he uh, has come out with this new iOS app, and it's really awesome. So. Um, let's make this simple. When you first log in, whenever you first download the app, uh, you will be presented with this screen. You can tap anywhere to get started. And it says, what is your monthly budget? So I'm just going to make it simple. I'll just type in $1,000 is the person's income. And then let's say that they live in some fantasy world where they pay $250 a month for housing expenses. Wouldn't that be awesome? Uh, and then they want to spend, and you can see as I type that in, uh, it shows you the percentages. So 25% of your income is what you pay on housing expenses. And then how much money do you want to have to spend per month? Well, let's say 375, which is about 38%. So that was a recommendation. I'm going to ramp it up a little bit and make it 390. And then we will tap continue. And then how much do you want to save? Yeah, let's go with 360. So we'll tap finish setup. Now, 
we get to start doing what we want to do. So right here is where I can type in, you know, expenditures, but I want to show the different screens first. There are insights. This is super cool because as you use it, it starts to show you insights into your spending. It shows you, you know, what have you spent overall? Um, what you spend the most on what categories you spend the most money on. So, hey, you know, you are a big coffee drinker uh, and you spend a whole bunch of money there where you have stopped spending as much money, you know, so, uh, you know, you spend money on groceries at the beginning of the month, but maybe you don't later. And then how the some of those things may have jumped or gone down overall. So if you've got a bit of a uh, clothing purchasing habit, then you can see, oh, boy, suddenly you're spending a lot of money on clothing. It will start to create, of course, a graph for you for history, and then it shows you, you know, your your daily budget. So I can see in a given day, I make thirty three dollars. If I were to get paid a thousand dollars, I think it was per month. Um, that means that I pay eight dollars a day toward my housing expenditures. I can spend thirteen dollars, and I'm saving twelve dollars a day. You can adjust that so that you see what it is per month, per quarter, etc and have that information there uh, very easily. Uh, there are some settings for you know changing the dark mode. You can export all of your data at any point. If you want to add sense, it does um, basic rounding, basically. So let's say I go to the grocery store and I buy three avocados. What does that cost? 12 bucks? Yeah, let's say that. I can easily type that $12 and then I just tap it that it's a grocery expenditure and then enter. Boom. That money's in there. I can already see how much I spent. So the point of this app, and you can add new categories as you go here. Um, so then it starts to develop that information for you. This is an app that wants you to very easily enter your expenditures. I find that a lot of budgeting apps, you end up taking like five, six, seven taps to actually enter any expenditure as you're going along. And uh, Sawyer, you know, in writing about this app, he said, I wanted it to be, what is it, two taps uh, to be able to type in what I want. So $10, uh, we'll create a new tag called beverages and say that I spent $10 on coffee. Uh, That's pretty good. It should be that easy. It needs to be that easy. Boom. Yeah. Done. Yeah. And then it lets me know, hey, you're $9 over budget today, so you do need to be careful. But yes, it does need to be that easy. So I just launched the app. I could type that in and then move on with my day. Uh, also, in iOS 14, uh, I'm excited. There are going to be some excellent widgets that will help you see, you know, what your leftover uh, daily spending is, what your leftover, uh, what you have, you know, that kind of thing. So it will help with your budgeting even farther whenever you get iOS 14. But in the meantime... What I love is how simple it is to enter that information. And uh, what I've seen, too, is that the developer is very driven to continue to improve upon the app. There have already been several updates to it that add um, new features and make adjustments to the features that are there. So, yeah, you got to check out Nudget. It's available in the App Store for $2.99. No subscriptions or anything like that. You buy it for $2.99 and it's yours. Nudget. Simple budgeting for the rest of that's, us. That's really a good idea. Did you ever play a game called Machinarium? Does that, does that ring a bell? It doesn't. Yeah, it was a great, it was a beautiful uh, puzzle game that was popular on every, it was on every platform. It's from a company called Amanita Design. And they have mm -hmm. a new one. My app cap is their newest puzzle adventure game, Creeks. What I really like is... Oh. It's free on Apple Arcade. The rest of the world is going to have to pay for it. It's coming to the Xbox, PlayStation 4, PC, the Switch, July 22nd. Animated Design usually does that with all their games. But there, you're going to have to pay for it. We get it for free on, nice. uh, on Arcade. So I just wanted to show you this game because it's, it's really quite beautiful. This is... Whoops. Too much wiggle. This is... <laughs> this is creeks now i don't don't no spoilers here i'm a That's little creepy. bit advanced along this game so uh i'm just going to show you a little uh oh okay there's a robot dog i'm in a creepy house and i've got to find my way around this house uh oh there's puzzle that is a big creature. That's a big creature. 
So there's puzzles galore. There's also robotic dogs. I gotta jump! Oh, ah! he got me. Oh no. He got me. So we're gonna we're gonna have to relive that scene real quickly. You can climb ladders up and down ladders. Oh, there's that other dog. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, okay, okay. As soon as, as soon as the cutscene ends, I'm gonna have to watch that hand again. I'm gonna have to get out of here. Get out of here. Run. Yikes. Okay. That knocked the dog back, but it also blocked my ladder out of here. Come on, come on, come on. Jump down, jump. Oh, he ah. got me again. Okay, there's a little bit of this going on in this game, which I kind of don't like. Um, I'll show you some other things that are going. Oh, oh I'm back here again. No, there's... Oh, there is. Look at that. So now I can go... Oh, go! Darn it. Oh, man. Jeez. It's a little... It's. Just, I'm just dumb. So, <laughs> up again. Fast forward. You're right. Let's skip that. Come on, look down. Jump! Oh, dang it. <laughs> okay, you're, I'm never going to get to show you this. Up the ladder. Run. Fast forward. Run. Look. Oh, oh there we finally go. Finally got away from that damn <laughs> dog. God. Okay, there are uh, places I can crawl around. Holes, you can see it's a big old creepy house. There's ladders I can go up and oh, down. Oh, and, no, another dog. Oh, let's work. Oh, I've been here before. I remember this dog. Uh, oh, it's dumb. <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute. Let me. Let me. Oh, no. Oh, this is bad. Up. Up. Oh, he got me. Oh, man. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. I didn't know to get you on the ladder. That's... Oh, man. So you see there's controls in the left and the right. Those are the only controls that I'm aware of. Um, so there's a dog there. If I go down. Oh, I've been here, though. So let's try going up. Can I go up now? If I jump, nothing there. What I gotta do is get around this dog, I can see. So, oh, I know what I need to do. I need to draw this dog out over here. All the way, yeah, yeah. and then the other dog to the other spot. Okay. He waits there for a little while. And then I need to go down here and get, whoops. Timing is of the essence here. And I need to draw, oh no. Oh no! This, this oh crap, oh, no. oh, oh, both of them got me that time. So you see what my strategy is. Yes. There are other things to do in this game, by the way, than run away from dogs. Yeah, let's get up the ladder, up, 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 up. Okay, get up the ladder, go down this ladder real quick. Get this dog excited. Come on. Oh, crud. There's, I must be missing something. Yeah. 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 I love the artwork. I wonder if there's a way I can go back to the beginning. Um, let's go back to the beginning because I want you to see a little bit more of this. It is a really beautiful uh, game. So they do give you a way you can look at. Uh, oh, but only if only if we've unlocked them. Oh, rats. So I haven't, I haven't unlocked those paintings. Um, let's see what options there are. Language, controls. You can use a uh, controller on this. If you liked Machinarium, I'll reset progress so I can start over again just to give you a little bit of more of a sense of it. So we start in my room. It's not going to be a great game for people who don't like um, repetitive actions, but I have to say, I think it's such a beautiful game yeah, but it you does might, seem to be... It's got a very specific design style that it really yeah. sticks to, which I kind of like. And if you're used to Machinarium, where you, you build a robot and you explore, um, you'll get this... I have to fix this light several times. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh darn it. This darn light seems to be really... It's hot. Whoa, wallpaper peeled. That's interesting. Fix that. Go back here. Sit down. I'm just trying to, you know, read a book. Oh man, just, just trying read to book. read a book here. Let's fix that one more time here. Oh, crud! Uh oh, oh, it's 
a little scary now. Oh, the whole thing unpeeled. Oh. What the heck? What's going on? Let's go look over at that. It's a safe. <gasps> What's in there? Is this another world? Oh my Ooh. goodness. Hello? <laughs> Hello. I just really like Amanita Design. They have they have fortunately I have a flashlight. Thank goodness, because I'm gonna need that. Let's go uh let's go crawling here and see. Ooh, it's spooky. Ooh, wow, I'm in a, another world. And he didn't know this was in his own house? Come on, dude. Come on. Well, so he's a renter. Oh. Okay. Uh, should I go down that ladder? Well, now that just makes me suspicious about that one door in my apartment. Yeah. Ooh, how far down is it? Long Ooh. way down. Whoa! Oh, no. I can't get back to the... Oh. Oh, now you're I've stuck. lost my lamp. Oh, well, let's just climb down for a little while. See what's whoa all the way down. How low does it go? It goes a long way down. I hope I'm not spoiling this uh, for you. I'm kind of giving you spoilers. No, to, yeah, this to, is just the intro. Play. But it's just the intro. It's just the beginning. And there is where we're going to be crawling around. Holy moly! So this is a brand new game. It's called Creeks. It is from Amanita Design, and I love it that we can play it first on Apple Arcade yeah. for at least for a week. Uh, it'll be uh, go it'll go wide on uh, July 22nd. Um, but if you have an Apple Arcade, you could play it on your iPad, iPhone, Mac, or Apple TV right now. And if you're paying paying for Apple Arcade, it costs you nothing. And I think it's I really like their stuff. If you're just in the mood for kind of an atmospheric, fun puzzle game to play, Creeks. Creeks. C-R-E-A-K-S. Cool. Like creaky stairs. There's a lot of that. Or like my joints when I wake up in the morning. Yeah. Me too. I thought that was just an old man thing. Are you creaky Alas, in the morning when you get up? I, I'm kidding. No. Can you make <laughs> not, a fist? Not quite creaky. <laughs> okay, good. All right. You're not old yet. Got it. You got time. Uh, that's Micah Sargent. Young in mind... No, no, young in body, old in spirit. He is the co-host of this fabulous show, iOS Today, where we cover the iPhone, the iPad, the Apple Watch, the Apple TV, even CarPlay. If we ever want to do CarPlay, I got the unit right here. The head unit's right here, ready to go. Excellent. Looking uh, forward to it. We do this show. If you want to watch us do it live, there's a lot of extra stuff that doesn't make it into the final version. Mostly it's us fumfering around. <laughs> Kevin cuts that right out. Sometimes some pre-show that there's could be wrapped into. Yeah. Could be its own show, frankly. Yeah. Best If you want to see all that stuff, tune in around 9 a.m. Pacific. That's noon Eastern time. That's 1600 UTC. Uh, the live streams, and there's audio and video, are all uh, aggregated at twit.tv slash live. So you can pick the stream you want. There's YouTube and there's Twitch and, you know, there's a lot of other stuff. So uh, twit.tv slash live. Twit.tv is our website. That's where all the shows we do are made available on demand, uh, including this show, which is twit.tv slash iOS. It's also on YouTube if you want to watch there. Uh, recently, we eliminated the low bandwidth versions. We didn't think anybody really wanted a 480 P version of the show. Uh, we only offer the 720p version now of the video downloads. Make sure you've got the right feed uh, as well as the audio. Uh, a number of people said, hey, you know, I, uh, I use the low video quality. You know, if you want video, 720p doesn't seem a lot to ask, but you could also go to YouTube. If you have a YouTube mm -hmm. uh, premium account, you can download it. If you don't, you probably find a YouTube downloader to let you download any quality you want. They transcode to all the way down to 240p if you want. Uh, and so the bandwidth, you can reduce it that way. The best way to reduce bandwidth is listen to the audio version of our shows. And mm -hmm. a lot of people do that. That's the smallest version of the show. Micah, how can people ask a question or give us feedback? Well, I do believe I still hear creaks. Yeah. Okay, so that's a funny story. Because I had it on my iPad, and I closed my iPad, but it didn't turn it off. <laughs> and... For most of the day yesterday, I rebooted my computer. I couldn't figure out because it's pretty low level. Yeah. But I thought, there's something going on. I don't know. Is that coming from my speakers? I finally figured out it was creaks still running. Oh, that's so funny. Is yeah. there a leak in the house? That's funny. Because <laughs> it's very low level and it's just, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. It's almost atmospheric. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, you can send in your questions, your feedback, etc. It's iOS today at twit.tv. All right. We'll get it there. We will be back next Tuesday and every Tuesday. I hope you will too. We thank you for watching. On behalf of Micah Sargent, I'm Leo Laporte. We'll see you next time on iOS Today. Hey, folks, it's Micah Sargent here, co host of Smart Tech Today, right here on twit.tv. Every single week, Matthew Casanelli and I sit down to talk about smart tech for the week. That's right. It can get kind of complicated, but there's a lot of news out there. There's a lot of products to dig through. There are a lot of questions to answer, and we try to do that all every single week. From voice assistants to wearables to smart garage door openers and lights, there's so much to cover and, well, so little time. So be sure to check it out. It's twit.tv slash STT. Oh, that rhymes.